Alright, kababayan. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, kung saan man kayo nanonood. And today's presentation, we will try uh, to review yung mga players, especially yung mga players na related sa ating uh, stock market. And also, we will be discussing who are the index names the who would likely to move up or go on a mini run once na matrigger yung ating uh, third telco announcement. Uh, definitely may effect yan and uh, we will review yung general overall yung condition ng market natin ngayon alright this is for next week's trading November 5, 2018 and let's now move on alright uh, before we all uh, discuss yung mga ano na yan let's have a quick word from our sponsor which is very very timely alright this comes from Proverbs uh, chapter 21 verse 5 The plans of the diligent leads to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. Right, sa ating mga buhay, um, iilang mga tao na ba yung narinig yung na-scam? No? They, are, they are thinking of big, big profits. Recently, uh, yung mga mag-asawa no? na nagtayo sila ng parang pyramiding scam na related daw sa Bitcoin. Although we really do not know kung nagtitrade talaga sila. No? So marami nag-invest. Kasi malaking returns eh. Like uh, 10-20% a week yata yung, uh, yung balik. No? So marami yung na-scam and uh, yun nga, imbis na kumita is nalugi pa sila. Some of them, uh, lifetime of savings na wala. Right? And uh, diba? maraming ganyang kwento. Lalo na yung mga restaurant businesses, no? ano ano mga businesses na tinatayo and then they are they are not doing their due diligence no kung tawagin nga natin sa market and eventually nalulugi right sa stock market ganun din uh, we do all know yung due diligence no ibig sabihin you're doing your work you're investigating you're observing and you are doing the best that you can do para ma-stack yung probability na ikaw ay manalo. That's all we do. We stack our probability na manalo tayo by reading din yung charts. Uh, you're reading yung mga sentiment about market and you are analyzing you yourself kung ano yung mga mangyayari. Or you are preempting something. Alright? Or probably you're reacting if you're a day trader. And, uh, yun nga. Very timely dito because as we know, third telco will be announced and baka ma-fomo ka no? especially the first week of the market will be definitely a roller coaster ride maraming bababa maraming tataas no? and uh, you don't want to be on the part na pababa doon ka dapat sa pataas and yun nga uh, there will be a lot of whiffs so. and bindring up ko tong uh, word na to because it is very timely sa ating market ngayon. Right? Let's now move on. Alright, ano ba yung nangyari? Last week, we have only three trading days. Tatlong araw lang. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And we have yung uh, Thursday and Friday. Uh, wala tayong trading. No? And, ano yung nangyari? Very good naman. 76 points. Closing at 7.140. Again, yung mga institution. At the very last minute ng ating Wednesday close, uh, Wednesday uh, a session, siningit na naman nila yung mga pera nila habang patulog na naman yung mga retailers. Again, ganun lang naman sila eh. Gumagalaw. <coughs> Again, ganun naman sila gumagalaw. Uh, once na yung mga retailers is not interested or probably not looking at the market, they're going to spot yung mga position na sa tingin nila would have a very very high chance of uh, moving up no? in the upcoming months especially uh, we're nearing the fourth quarter of the year and uh, as we all know uh, there will be a mini mini run uh, that's a win ano? cycle kasi yan eh. so again these are the names that you would probably miss or you're not going to be observed kung hindi mo tinitignan yung market Uh, weekly so very uh, important that you have a market update no yung ganito 
So, sa mga nakita natin, as always, ay uh, ito yung mga index names na nag-pop na sa ating radar, no? And notable gainers were SMC, Meralco Globe. Before ng correction nila, ito rin naman yung mga naglilid sa ating index, itong SMC and Globe. And especially yung Meralco, no? They, they are... They are also putting their money on Meralco on a defensive side of things. And also, the Globe is a uh, utility, so defensive din yan. And SMC, as we all know, maraming project na roll out. I think San Miguel Corporation is one of the heavy heaters of the market. And followed by uh, JFC and DMC. JFC, as we all, as hindi mo na pa nababalitaan, they are going uh, on a wide-scale level yung uh, international market. Recently, yung UK nagtayo sila sa UK and marami acquisition like Team Ho One Smash Burgers marami marami nangyayari maganda sa JFC if you are a long long term investor magandang position tong JFC Jolly Food Corporation because as we all know sa local market naman kayang kaya at nakikipagsabayan sa kanyang mga kalaban like yung McDonald's no? and also we have DMC ah uh, Maganda rin yung movement, although uh, I do not like yung kanyang volatility at uh, this moment. Medyo uh, unstable sa tingin ko, but uh, maganda naman. It's doing on an uptrend and eto, no? Ito yung maganda. Once you are observing, uh, makikita mo, no? Last week, wala pa sila sa mga radar natin. And bilang nag-pop. Nag-pop lima pa. Alright? That is the index names that you should be watching. Right now, because once na yung third telco announcement ma-announce yan, definitely kung sino yung mananalo, it will breach yung new highs and it could trigger a mini run. And mini run, ang madadamay sa mga index name is probably etong lima na to. Or probably etong lahat ng lima na to is madamay kapag ka nagkaroon ng mini run. So, yan yung mga insights and mga observations na dapat uh, inaalam mo, no? As, as a new beginner, new trader. Alright. Maganda yan, no? We didn't hit yung 6.9 again. And we, we close at 7.140 for the week. Alright. So, let's try to see yung yung ating chart. Right? Makita nyo naman, it's definitely on a short-term uptrend lower lows and as long as hindi tayo mapunta ulit sa 6911 I think we're really good right we're going to have a significant resistance at 7200 area sa dalawa tatlo right sir good afternoon uh, are we going to be an uptrend sa ating index simple simple lang yung 72 as I say once na we, we did confirm or we did uh, announce yung third telco it would definitely have a market uproar kasi for the fast uh, I think one to two months everybody's holding their trigger right, uh, hindi ina-announce kasi nga yun ang mas magandang position hindi ka muna maglalagay ng iyong bet uh, for the third telco and you are lessening your risk right, again mm, short term uptrend tayo no? since we hit this bottom and as long as we don't hit yung 69 our index is good no? right uh, let's now try to move on alright ang ating move of the week comes from surpass no? 10.3 uh, maraming movement na mas malaki pa rito but this one yung surpass has a big volume no? and uh I have discussed this thoroughly sa ating uh, chart quick session. You might want to check out those, those video, itong kasabay na video na to. In surpass, uh, laging ito yung favorite together with CHP na i-reverse kasi nga medyo magaan and on a long long downtrend. No? But uh, sa mga bago, you might want to avoid this itong surpass kasi nga mas mahirap it i i-trade ang downtrend ng stock. Generally speaking, mas mahirap siya 
but the reward is there kaya napakaganda nitong i-trade naman para sa mga experienced traders no so i have already said itong surpass sa considerable volume i think for the last 2 uh, to 3 trading days maganda yung volume naman niya and yun nga na discuss ko siya sa other video you might want to check out no right that is our move of the week from surpass that is a solid 10.3% Let's now move on sa ating sentiment of the market. And ito yung sinasabi kong uh, small details na if you're not observing or you're just trading sa charts or you're just trading on yourself, you wouldn't, uh, you would miss out, definitely. Alright. Since the past 6 weeks, this is the first time that we see na nag-close ang value turnover natin, no? I think this is Wednesday ng 7 billion. So, that says a lot. Ibig sabihin, the buyers are more in control than the sellers at this point in time. And, this may due to the fact na yung third telco winners na once na may announce yan, sinasabi ko nga sa inyo, it might trigger a mini run not only on the index or the third telco names, but on the rest of the 30 index names, right? The past six weeks, hindi pa tayo lumagpas yun sa 7 billion. Usually, naglalaro lang yung turnover at around 3 to 4 billion. But at this moment, no, nagkaroon tayo ng turnover na around 7 billion, which is a big, big, uh, significant amount no, sa ating uh, index. So, indication yun na something is building up may pressure and we are seeing na yung buyers are more in control than the sellers themselves alright so ang ating uh, market sentiment rating for this week will give it a 6 out of 10 uh, just to be safe and hindi naman tayo parang maging hype na hype tayo no? so we want to check our emotions check yung ating uh, sinasabi nga natin uh, fear of missing out alright just observe uh, kung ikaw ay hindi kasigurado you just observe na lang muna. And we'll try to see and dissect kung ano yung mangyayari. Alright. IRC ang ating watch list for the last, I think, 3 weeks. And nangyari sa kanya, sell on news. Dum dumating na yung mga balita sa ating investing public. Marami na yung mga, mga updates. And for a short-term trend, you should have been out and sa mga long term uh, holders uh, you shouldn't be worried as long as 2.20 no around this area 2.20 or 2.25 is not hit no but sa ating mga short term or mga swing position they should have gotten out already but yung mga long term holders or trend followers uh okay pa naman at this point in time okay pa rin yung IRC the deal is already in the bag and I think we will have a groundbreaking, no? It's either this month, November, or December, uh, uumpisa na at least yung first phase ng project. Again, uh, longer time view, it's IRC is already in an uptrend and uh, let's try to see this week. Uh, it's currently sitting, no? At support, good support and uh, as long as yung 2.20 or 2.25 holds, uh, I am inclined to think that IRC is still good. And uh, uh, hindi pa kasi natin malaman kung ano yung scope ng project. But uh, what we're seeing or sa mga binabalita, they are going to add value dito sa IRC. No? So they are going to put some uh, facilities or mga probably buildings, office building at around the subway and then if papa list out nila or paparenta nila and they're probably going to make some x deals no so mga probably market uh, supermarket or mga areas around that uh, vicinity ng subway so yun yung mga value added uh, businesses na they're going to 2% no sa kanila mga investors again make no mistake about it yung mga bumili naman dito ay nag-invest uh, yung ABG uh, aggregate business group I think and 
meron pang isa eh, yung may one belt parang ganun and they are uh, investing for the longer time trend again you shouldn't be worried sa mga holders ng IRCF again we didn't hit yung 2.20 uh, on this area or 2.25 but if we go below that medyo I myself would be worried no and that's our take for IRC and again our take is short term short term downtrend or if you are a swing trader you should have been out already but if you are going for a trend following strategy IRC is still good right let's now move on right PXP what we do have here ay ito yung uh, pagbisita ng ating Chinese uh, official it did have a impact sa market no and lumaban lumaban yung bears lumaban din yung bulls right so maganda ngayon sa PXP it didn't go down so usually yung sell on news na ganyan it should have touch etong 16 pesos kapag ka ganyan but as well no may, may nag control na naman someone controlled and someone accumulated etong PXP yun nga lang hindi siya nagmamadali and he just want to accumulate more of this PXP ito base sa chart na nakikita natin as we see no very vo- very very volatile at this point in time but yung mga nagbenta naman was being controlled right yan ang ibig sabihin yun, the last three candles and probably we will just try to observe for the next uh, week or two itong PXP kung ano yung magiging price development or price action currently it's, an, it's an, uh, maganda naman it's on, generally on an uptrend and maganda yung base na ginagawa niya no? at this point in time itong box na to maganda and I think they didn't have any deal or they didn't strike a deal no pagdating na official dito but ang magandang balita naman dito is we're nearing or we are very much near sa probably announcement dito no so kung itong PXP kasi dapat bumaba na to eh, at this point in time but as we see we didn't uh, see any price movement on on a downward no but uh, nag-stabilize pa nga siya and that is a good good news para sa mga PXP holders and probably th- th- there's something cooking up and hindi natin alam pa sa ngayon uh, but definitely merong ano to merong nangyayari dito sa PXP that might trigger something big no but tulad nga nang sinasabi ko tong PXP is not for new traders kasi nga very very volatile din tong PXP and as we know yung China US uh, trade conflict might trigger a spillover dito sa PXP and then you might never know baka biglang bumaba to uh, so yun ang danger naman ng PXP it's not for investing but oh, more of a swing or day trading no but uh, the reward is really really great naman kapag uh, we did have a deal dito sa PXP again that's our take for PXP again itong PXP you should have it on your watch list itong PXP kasi maganda yung nangyayari no? nagkakaroon ng price uh, contraction no? and as we all know price contraction will be followed by price expansion hopefully pataas right that's our take for PXP Let's now move on sa ating SMC. Alright, SMC on a downward the trend, I think for the last uh, two, uh, two months, uh, I, I guess uh, one month, no? Pababa siya because yung sa kanilang share offering, no? Yung sa kanyang uh, sister company, yung Fure Foods sa kanilang share offering, parang they want to reduce the size, no? ng share offering and yung mga traders themselves medyo kinabahan kasi nobody wants to take 
on the other side, no? Walang walang buyer at this po- at this moment in time kasi malaki yan, malaking deal yan and medyo kinakabahan sila. So, nagbawas sila ng position sa SMC but ang good thing it was able to bounce at around this area below 160. So, take note of this area. This is a strike zone already. So, ibig sabihin every time the price uh, would hit yung below 160, dyan bumibili yung institutional natin, no? yung mga institution natin, or ating mga traders, kasi mapapansin mo naman yan eh, at this candle, there should have been a sell off more, but kung ano na yung ngari, kinontrol at around this area, so again, uh, it's currently sitting, no? at support at around 170 area, and mukhang magpapahinga naman ito, but as we all know, yung third telco announcement, will be made and who is the better candidate para i-push yung index natin no other than SMC and things might change and probably yung share offering nila somebody would step up and die buy again and magandang development yan probably ma-break niya yung kanyang uh, current 52 week high niya which is at uh, 180 and 10 cents again uh, there's no significant volume dito sa SMC. And as I say, it probably would rest or go on a sideways movement at around 170. And that's our take for SMC. <clears throat> Alright, before we start reviewing or recapping yung mga uh, third telco uh, bidders, let us try to see yung landscape ng mga bidders. Uh, see what, uh, kung ano yung mga ino-offer nila. No? So, so, we have yung now corporation. So, specialty nito is fiber in the air. We have the CMTS license already secured. And this was the early favorite. From the very beginning, uh, they have been very vocal sa kanilang position to be the third telco uh, provider. Yun nga lang, with the recent news na nangyari, tumaas yung price niya, I think pumalo pa to ng around the, I think 15 pesos, 18 pesos era, but it's now back on 4 pesos level because of so much speculation and so much uh, fear na nangyari dito sa Now Corporation. He's filed a case against the ICT and medyo hindi naging maganda yung uh, absorption ng market, lalong bumaba yung presyo. But the good thing is, bumili siya ng bid document and sabi nga nila sa mga recent news is magkita-kita tayo sa November 7. So definitely, there's something up on their sleeve. They didn't disclose yung mga kanilang backers or kanilang mga foreign partners. And I think uh, now corporation is, no? from what I see, they're very experienced din naman sa kanilang ginagawa. They have a business uh, plan already. But, uh, yun nga, uh, recent development, hindi naging pabor para sa kanila. Again, until hindi yan na-sign or hindi na-announce yan officially, we didn't know kung sino talaga yung mananalo dito. Kasi nga, itong North Corporation is tinatago niya yung baraha niya. So, makikita natin yan sa November 7. Yung isa pa sa mga bidders lately, out of the blue, yung AMA Telecom, Walang nakakaalam pa siguro kung ano yung mga capabilities nitong AMA Telecom other than that meron din silang license no but i think hindi nila man na- nagagamit or very unknown to very dark horse tong AMA Telecom right let's move on sa PTT Corp all right itong PTT Corp meron siyang uh, stocks no but currently uh, suspended due to violations sa ating uh, Philippine Stock Exchange and itong PTT Corp uh, ina ano siya eh uh, nililink siya sa MRC or probably yun ang uh, way niya no? para magkaroon ng uh, uh, way of pumondo or pondo but currently PTT Corp uh, let's try to see no? kung ano yung pwede niya pang ilabas Itong PTT Corp kasi nga medyo, I think, um, 
being an investor, medyo, I would stay away if I were doing the investing dito sa PTT Corp. Kasi nga, yung stock niya is currently suspended. And we didn't know kung malilip ba yan or hindi malilip or kung magbabackdoor ba siya or hindi magbabackdoor. So, medyo questionable tong, ano PTT Corp. So, again, yung isa sa mga interesting growth is yung LCS. LCS stands for Luit Chavit Singson. And it's uh, for mga uh, tandem sa Tier 1. No? So, Tier 1 is a Davao-based organization. Australian yung head niyan. And LCS Group, alam naman natin sa Ilocos, which is on the north. So, nagsanig pwersa sila. And based on mga interviews, I, I don't know yung service nila or yung level of service nila. But based on the interviews, they are uh, planning to have a satellite no, to service yung uh, mga clients. And uh, I think very questionable din kasi nga bakit hindi yan ginagawa ng PLDT and Globe kung may existing ang ganyan technology. So, so meron pa siya yung parang TV box. Ganun yung parang yung implementation niya. So, may mga movies doon o mga ano pwede kang mag-connect sa internet. So, very, very suspect din sa akin itong LCS group na to. But, ang maganda naman sa kanya, if ever mananalo daw, pabababain niya yung presyo ng uh, internet, which is a very good thing sa ating lahat. No? But, uh, let's try to see kung ano yung pwedeng i-offer nilong LCS group. And, uh, ang sabi nga nila, they are the only bidders last March. 2018 and that only goes to show na talagang uh, they are very very interested to be the third telco player so medyo ang questionable lang sa kanila is paano nila mapapababa yung presyo ng internet and paano yung implementation nila yung roll out nila about dun sa satellite na sinasabi nila na mayroon silang capability or may in order na sila so again isa pang Bidders natin is yung Udena Corp. Udena Corp is being linked sa ISM. So, uh, no surprises, yung ISM has already gone considerable movement. And uh, long-term view, it's on an upturn. So, as we all know, Dennis Uy Dabao of Dabao, no? Kasi... Meron din Dennis Uy of Pampanga, no? As I'm going to say, itong Dennis Uy of uh, Davao is as we all know, is a close ally of the president. And yun yung ex-factor niya, no? And sa telco operation, I, I don't think meron ba sila or they are already operating. But pagdating din sa finances, I think wala rin magiging problema kasi magiging maraming uh, bakar tong Odena Corp. If, if sakali na sila yung mapili sa corporation. Ang questionable lang sa kanila is yung capability nila to roll out this very, very big project. Kasi as we all know, medyo mahirap kalabanin itong Globe and uh, PLDT which is very, very big. Again, uh, very, very good development. No? As I was researching, itong Converge ICT which is ang pangalan din niya is Dennis Uy din. So, nakakalito. So, we have Dennis Uy of Udena Corp. And we have Dennis Uy of Pampanga. No? This is very two different person. But pares yung pangalan. Converge ICT, as I research, they have already rolled out. May mga projects na sila. And as parang sa tingin ko, they are very technical, technically driven din. No? Parang, parang no corporation din. They, they know how the telecoms business work. They know how to operate. And uh, parang sila yung mga tech savvy na masasabi natin. No? Sa ating mga players, yung now corporation, I think, I, I think from my personal view, very techy sila. Eh, no? And itong Converge ICT, ganun din ang dating sa akin. They are very techy. And they have also the same significant uh, experience sa pag roll out ng telecoms business. But ang maganda rito sa Converge ICT, they're the fastest growing uh, internet uh, service provider, I think yung FiberX. But very select lang yung mga location. 
ang maganda rito talaga sa Converge ICT is is already form a partnership with Korea Telecoms no KT Corp so as we all know uh, mabilis ang internet sa Korea and uh, maganda sana yan kung ma-implement sa atin no but etong Converge ICT is being link sa Vulkan. So, mapapansin nyo ngayon sa mga social media post and mga following uh, to the moon na daw ang Vulkan. But, uh, we really did not know, no? We really do not know kung once na ma announce yung Converge ICT, if sakali, no? Kung ma announce yung Converge ICT as winner or yung ISM as winner, we do not know kung kakailangan ninyo pa ba yung Vulcan. And same thing sa ay sa sa uh, Udena Corp. Kakailangan ninyo din ba yung ISM as backdoor listing, no? So yun ang magiging susceptible naman dito sa ISM and uh, sa Vulcan, no? But recently, no, sa kanilang mga movement and disclosures, yung ISM has already planning to change it sa state of uh, business from mining gagawing holdings corporation same thing is true sa Vulcan from mining they are going to be a holdings company and that is a very very uh, interesting move for both of them and as we all know we have already foreign uh, bidders we have the China Telecom and we have Norway Telenor Austria Mobitel ah, ang maganda rito sa tatlo na to they are bigger much much bigger compare sa ating globe and ating uh, PLDT. So, kung pera lang ang pag-uusapan, kaya-kaya naman nila makipagsabayan dyan sa dalawang local companies na yan. But, ang questionable dito is who will be their local partners and who will be uh, tawag dito, yung security naman natin. No? Kasi internet, makukuha nila yung mga datas natin, yung mga uh, analytics ng bansa natin they could also tell yung mga pinag-uusapan or ma-monitor nila yung social media natin and mga security no security details natin malalaman din nila so yun yung big big question dito sa mga tatlong players na to again hopefully you're able to understand yung mga sinasabi ko rito so quick rundown yung now corporation and yung Converge ICT has very very tech savvy no they are already operating and i think they are very very tech savvy ama telecom this seems to be a dark horse to me ptt uh medyo tagilid yung stock niya ngayon and we really don't know kung gagamitin niya ngayon MRC as backdoor same thing is true sa Udena Corporation they are also going are they also going to be using yung uh, ISM as backdoor no and same thing is true dito sa ICT they are, if they are going to uh, use yung Vulcan sa kanilang backdoor again uh, on the financial side of things ito yung malalakas talaga Udena Corp maraming backer yan Converge ICT uh, joining forces with KT Corporation malaki yung KT Corp na yan kayang-kaya din makipagsabayan and China Telecom also Norway Tel Telenor and Austria Mobitel and I don't I also think no ni LCS Group ni Chabit will have uh, capability na makipagsabayan when it comes to the financial side of things but yun nga lang yung technicalities or bagiging tech savvy that's questionable no I, I really do hope na yung tire 1 na kasama niya would be yung bagging in tech savvy. Right? I, I hope you were, uh, you're able to to get something out of it. And here are our picks, no? Probably, uh, hanggat wala pang binibigay na update or disclosure, eto yung sa tingin natin, no? All right. Uh, ISM. Tulad nga sinasabi ko, ito yung picks before yung development ng Vulcan. No? Very, very, ano kasi, uh, lupit nung ginawa nung uh, Vulcan, uh, make me question if ISM could really win this thing. 
again yung ism from 1.5 Alright, from 1.5, it already have considerable uh, movement, no? Up to, umabot pa nga ng, uh, at around 3.5, no? It is rejected two times at this, at this area. And as we all know, uh, dito bumili si Dennis Oye, yung balita. Short term uptrend, then bumaba ulit. Recently, nag-disclose siya na hindi daw sasali sa uh, third telco. And then, biglang lift ng suspension. Pasimple lang, biglang nagbilihan dito. And currently, the last 3 trading days, it's going na correction. And, parang wala silang masyadong binabalita ngayon, no? Sa kanilang media, social media, wala silang masyadong update. Hindi katulad ng ibang players na napakaingay. So, very noiseless, tahimik lang. I think, this would be a very very uh, good move by uh, ISM so kasi by November 7 hindi natin alam kung ano yung i out nila na uh, secret weapon nila kumbaga so ISM I think from the technical standpoint still very good no etong ISM and it has the X factor Dennis Oi of Dabao and uh Yun nga lang, hindi natin alam pa kung ano yung mga plano ng ISM and how they are going to roll out itong uh, corporation. But, uh, kung bebet kayo dito sa ISM, you might as well uh, bet or put money very, very uh, manageable. No? Huwag ka naman mag-all in kasi once na pumalpak din naman itong ISM, is napakasakit din naman yan. Might go down below sa support na 3 pesos. Again, that is our take for ISM. And let's try to move. Very, very critical yung November 7, I think is Wednesday. Very, very critical guys yung Monday and Tuesday kung ano yung magiging price action ng uh, vote ISM and Vulcan. So, yun yung tinitignan kong dalawa na possible na ano. Kasi, dyan natin malalaman especially Tuesday's closing Diyan na natin malalaman kung sino yung mananalo kasi uh, we will be observing. no Again, let's now move on sa isa pang uh, stocks that's being related sa third telco. Yung ICT Converge, KT Corp, ang balibalita. No? They are going to do backdoor sa Vulcan. No? Uh, alam mo, Vulcan, this is mining company. Ngayon, inililig siya sa turtle ko. It has voluntarily suspended itself. Then, may disclosures. Changing yung kanilang uh, uh, nature of business to a holdings corporation. That is very, very good move. And, kung manalo yung uh, ICT Converge and ginamit nga itong Vulcan, definitely tataas to sigurado. And from the technical standpoint, no? Ganun din ang ginawa halos. From 150, pumalo hanggang 270 plus. So, maganda rin siya. And, sabi ko nga sa inyo, if you are going to bet dito sa Vulcan, maliit lang sana. No? So, we have considerable volume, no? May another set of buyers at around this area maintaining the price. So, they are very, very confident sa kanilang pagbili, no? So, yun ang pag-interpret mo dyan eh. Kasi, dito, initial set of buyers, bumili ulit sila down this area. Dito, consolidation, and another set of buyers at around this area. So, technically speaking, same with ISM, parehas lang sila. Napakaganda naman ng formation ng kanilang mga technicals. On a longer time of view, they are an uptrend. And, Let's try to see. No? Again, yung ating fix sa third tail ko ngayon would be split sa ISM or Vulcan. Yun lang, Vulcan, very suspect naman dito. Is, hindi naman natin alam talaga truly kung gagawin silang backdoor ng ICT Converge. Yun ang malaking problema. Big, big question mark. But once na ma-announce yan, eh, wala nang uh, magiging problema. Again, the market will be moving 
sa third telco play this November 7 and alam nyo na yung mga plays na mangyayari it's either ISM or Vulcan but don't uh, dis disclose uh, wag mo nyo nang ano uh, don't neglect yung now kasi as we know they have already a uh, uh, foreign partner hindi nga lang nila din disclose masyado so again we have ISM and Vulcan leading our picks and then do not disclose then yung now kasi they might be be able to follow up something no so monday and tuesday very very ano yan in the big indicator kung sino yung mananalo depending sa price action ng mga yan and again if you are new sa trading please avoid itong mga third telco plays you might as want to parang yun nangyari sa IRC once we have so, something solid or napirmahan na or it's already in the bag no saka ka lang pumasok kung sino yung panalo ang kaya lang naman nilalaro tong ganito sa third telco is malaki yung reward at this point in time yung mga presyo ng mga yan ISM Vulcan once na masecure yung ano it could spike up no times 9 times 10 at this point in time so yung risk to reward ratio lang naman and yung kaya lang naman nila gustong pumwesto rin yung mga players natin, yung mga traders kasi nga, baka hindi mo na maabutan kasi mabilis na mabilis talaga yung magiging price acceleration kung sino man yung mananalo again, hopefully you were able to gain something in this video and guys ano yung mga nakikita nyo sa turtle ko, baka I have missed something or misinterpret yung mga current movement and please guys uh, subscribe if may natutunan kayo and hit that like button and let's try to see and see kung sino yung mananalo sa ating third telco and i do hope na you have gained something dito sa video na to again maraming maraming salamat sa panonood this is PSEI recap